Have you ever seen old cars that are ridiculously hard to start? Like the starter just goes roar, roar. Yeah, like that. Do you know why that happens? There's a couple of reasons. One, the starter is shimmed way too close. The second actually has to do with ignition timing. And this is something that happens with classics that have way too much timing. Here's what really happens. What happens is that when you have a race car like this, this is my bracket car, I have the timing locked out at a rather difficult 38 degrees to start. Okay, people that are not into drag racing may be saying, why on earth would you have your timing locked at 38 degrees? That seems like a lot. The answer is yes. However, the reasons that a lot of drag racers, especially bracket racers, lock the timing on distributor style ignitions is because it makes for the fewest number of moving parts. If the weights aren't in there to move around, then there's no moving parts to fail or cause inconsistency issues. And this car's got a torque converter that stalls at 4,400 RPM. This kind of thing isn't something you do unless you have uh, a converter that stalls at an appropriate high RPM. You've got a good reason to do it. So locking the timing on your street car may not be the best thing to do. However, it's what I did here and it's made the car more consistent. When you have old school classics and the timing is too far forward, especially if the starter is shimmed too tight, you get that same anomaly and people will say, well, turn the timing back a little bit so that way you have less initial timing. Well, that works great on daily drivers that still have the mechanical advance in the distributor, but with this, I don't have that luxury. So there's something else I have to do and it involves a little bit of wiring. Let's get into that. So basically the way to pull back the timing or retard the timing is to use the starter saver, a start retard. There's a lot of ways to do it. Because I'm running an old school analog 6AL, yes, still works, works great in this car, and it still functions as it's supposed to. I'm not about to change until something goes belly up. Uh, this is the box that you have to use. Basically, four wires, the connector that runs to the mag pickup coil, uh, it's got a couple of things that you got to use. So basically, what this does is pulls the timing back either 10 degrees or 20 degrees. The new 6ALs uh, have this start retard feature built in. So if you're looking at that and considering locking out your timing, the new 6ALs could be a very good way to go. I'm also seeing that feature as being consistent across all of the uh, new capacitive discharge ignition boxes. That's a common feature that's being put into these. So I'm very glad to see that. It eliminates the need for extra doohickeys. Now, this would be a very easy install if my MSD box was on the fender, but it isn't. It's hidden. Once upon a time, I used to think I was sneaky. I would try and hide stuff everywhere I possibly could. Now I have my MSD hidden in the factory location where the computer used to be. Yes, this used to be a computer controlled QJet and distributor. So behind that panel, you can kind of see it peeking out there is the red of the MSD box. It's not a perfect fit, but at a passing glance, you'd never notice. With everything down, it looks a lot less clean than what it was up there. And yes, I realize that's a scotch lock. I'm gonna take care of that while I'm here. But now for the part of the project that to me is the most head scratching is where do I put this thing? Do I try and keep it uh, under wraps? Do I try and keep everything super clean? Or do I just uh, live without the panel and, or maybe I even put this to the uh, outside of the panel. I don't know, I haven't decided yet. I'm trying to figure that out. Pardon the horrible lighting, but I got it mounted up. Basically I built a uh, little bracket, bent it up, and mounted that thing to the top, which nestles right up into that little gap there and still allows me to use the original cover to cover this all up and to uh, hide it. I don't know why I'm trying to hide stuff anymore. I just want to make it look right. So this scotch lock is conveniently a keyed source, which makes it very easy because this red wire goes to a keyed source. So that goes into there. I've got another scotch lock that's a ground, which I'll clean up and get this guy in there too. Uh, this last connection goes to the distributor, which I've got right here. And then this yellow one goes to the white one, which is around here somewhere, but it comes through the fire, it comes, uh, uh, it's around, I'll find it. But the yellow one connects to that white one. And then I have to go double check the timing and move it four degrees because that is what the instructions say. So let me get wiring.
When I'm crimping wires, I know I've got it tight enough when all the knuckles start to pop. So once I get wires put back up there, it kind of tucks out of sight, just like it's supposed to, and it'll continue to hide. Now, the wiring kit that I used, this is one that came with an assortment of terminals and heat shrinks, which are very convenient. It's nice to be able to use the colored ones where they matter, like if you're covering red wires, the pinkish ones are great. But... Also, they can be a little unsightly if you're doing it in other places. So being able to hide that stuff under the dashboard is kind of nice. Ignore the rest of the mess. That's part of the HVAC stuff that's got to come out with the dashboard someday. But I'm going to get this guy buttoned back up, put the sill panel back in, and put the cover back on it. Get the timing light hooked up, and let's go work on the timing. All right, I've got the timing light set up. This is the first fire after the install. Uh, the instructions do say that the timing will have changed because there is some magnetic pickup compensation. I get it. However, whenever you're doing anything ignition related, especially with that kind of stuff, verify your timing. Make sure it's exactly where you want it to be. Alright, so the timing is back, set back up at 38 degrees, everything is happy, everything seems to be working. Uh, it's 10 degrees retarded, which means that in normal starting conditions, it's operating at 28 degrees instead of 38 degrees. That's still a lot, I understand. However, uh, it gives me room to be able to pull back further if I absolutely need to. Short term, I'm happy where it sits. So. I think we're going to put it back in the trailer, get ready to go racing. Now, if you like this video and you're interested in learning more about wiring, check out the video over here. Promise it'll do you good.